Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2016. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Cisco, IBM, NVIDIA, and our ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Wendy Dunlap is here. She's the Director of Global Agency Partnerships for the Oracle Marketing Cloud. Wendy, good to see you. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. So, big week here in New York City. We're doing this big data stuff. You guys are also here for another event, right? Tell us about that. Yeah, we recently had a media roundtable with a group of our agency partners and consultancy partners uh, and invited select media vehicles to really talk about who should be leading the ad tech revolution? Should it be agencies? Should it be consultancies? Um, we had partners from Deloitte, Accenture, Merkel, Digitas, as well as Publicis One. So it was a really lively morning, as you can imagine. No coffee was needed. <laughs> and um, you know, we started off with uh, how do we define ad tech and martech? I think that's still a question for a lot of agencies. Um, and I, I love one of our Merkel partners gave a really succinct definition of when we think about ad tech, we should think about cookie-based advertising, right? It's the, the stuff that we've been doing for the past 20 years. Um, it's not really attached to an identity, but when we think about MarTech, that's really where we're getting into identity and the fidelity of getting down to that single user ID and being able to market directly to them. Um, so yeah, it's a really enthralling conversation. Yeah, the well, whole, I was going to say, just the whole segmentation of one is a very different kind of opportunity uh, as well as a challenge that, that's finally now you can start to do, especially with these things. Yeah, absolutely, and, and with the right data partner, right? With the right technology partner, and, and that's really where the Oracle Marketing Cloud comes in. You know, we um, have been really strategic in, in uh, acquiring and developing best-in-class technology around data management, uh, audience management, automation, personalization, CRM, you know, all integrated into a system that enables our customers to really focus less on the technology and more on the innovation and the creativity of marketing. And so that's really where we've distinguished ourselves. And my group in particular is working hand in hand with ad agencies and figuring out, well, how do we use this technology to bring innovation to our clients? So I got to ask you, I got to come back to the round table. So, so the ad agencies, I'm sure, said we should be leading and the consultants said <laughs> we should be leading, right? Actually, no. Um, uh, it was really surprising. Um, the consensus in the room was, was that the lines are blurring between consultancies and agencies, and it's actually becoming a non-issue. It's really not about whether a marketer or a CMO hires a consultancy or an agency, or maybe they have both, but it's who is in, who's able to drive the best experiences. So that was kind of the theme of the morning, and I think that's what we're seeing in our industry, right? Who is, what um, institutions, what companies, what agencies are able to drive that end-to-end -end consumer experience that's integrated, that's personalized, that's relevant to the consumer, and is ultimately driving sales, driving ROI. What's historically been the role of each? Can you just sort of educate us and describe? Yeah, that? so historically, um, you know, agencies have functioned really in the lane of media planning and buying. So they partnered primarily with the CMO, um, focusing on those marketing plans, um, and specifically, as I said, those media buys, which is probably the largest expenditure in any you know, CMO's budget. Consultancies have always had a, wired, a wider breadth, right? Where their conversations will go from the CMO to the CFO CFO and sometimes the C CIO. Mm -hmm. And so they were really focused on sort of business operations and the bottom line of driving sales and driving efficiency that would drive those sales and a greater return on investment. So they weren't really as focused um, on the media side. Now we're seeing the two groups are really converging. Advertising agencies are becoming much more aggressive in, in being those business strategists because they know they control so much of the client's budget. And consultancies are getting more involved in the operations, the execution of media, such as the model that you'll see at um, partners like Accenture. Which is sort of building out digital experiences, actually doing media buys, running analytics to exactly. see what's working. Exactly. Yeah, and so what we're seeing is that you know agencies um, have been um, really playing catch up a little bit in terms of the learning curve um, in you know becoming those business partners and making marketers their clients comfortable and letting the agency really into their business. And there's a huge advantage for our ad agency partners to do that. But they need training. They need enablement. They need to understand how does the technology enable not just the effectiveness of the media, but the bottom line of the ROI 
ROI bottom line for a marketer. And we're, my group at Oracle, the Oracle Marketing Cloud, is actively enabling agencies to have those conversations with their clients through the use of our DMP and our other technology platforms. So let's go through kind of an example of how I would engage with the Oracle Marketing Cloud. I'm a marketer and I want I want a combination of brand amplification and I want, I want leads because I can want to drive ROI. Right? I mean, that's got to be pretty common, right? Yeah, it's, so. it's actually really common. So a lot of the conversations um, will start with the clients um, and then they'll bring in their ad agency partner. There are many instances, however, where the agencies really see a need for a client to be smart and strategic about their technology to really innovate and enhance their marketing. So the agency will come to us and they'll say, hey, we have X client and we really you know, think that they need to invest in a data management platform. Platform. They've got tons, they've got a huge CRM database. We'd like to do lookalike targeting and purchase some second party and third party data and really scale this out for them. And we think you know, we could be really efficient. And they'll come to us and ask us to be their partners in pitching that client and selling through our technology solutions. On the other hand, it's sometimes the client and the conversation starts with the client. In that case, my team will engage with the agency, make sure that they're involved in the conversation because it's really essential that the agency POV is heard. You know, I can't say enough, agencies are controlling the largest share of budget at any you know, marketing organization. And so it's so key that their um, expertise, that their insight is involved in the decision-making process when you're looking at MarTech and AdTech. Often the agencies are the one deploying it, they're the ones that are gonna be managing it, and they're the single entity that has that end-to-end -end consumer view. No other organization has that. So what are the data sources? And, and talk more about the data that I'm managing. Where does the data come from? Is it lists that I'm bringing in, a house list? Is it social data? I'm sure it's yes, yes, and yes. Yes, but it's all of the above. Sort of yeah, it's all of the above. I mean, first and foremost, you know, clients really need to strategically lever leverage their CRM database, right? The customers that they already have, um, they probably already have a really robust e-marketing program, and we have great solutions to automate that as well. But in addition to that, you know, they should be using that to get smarter with their advertising. And not just their display advertising, not just their social advertising, but their mobile advertising, their connected device advertising. I mean, one of the advantage of Oracle, one of the advantages is that, you know, not only do we provide the technology platform to manage all those data sources, but we also provide data with our ODC. So we talk about this OMC, ODC, the Oracle Marketing Cloud, the um, Oracle Data Cloud one-two punch. So we're providing the technology platform and we're sourcing the data, both the client's own first-party data and then other data sources from strategic partners. And we're allowing marketers to, enabling marketers to more efficiently then get their word out, not just to their customers, but people who have similar interests and needs as their customers. And that enables them to scale their marketing and ultimately it drives greater return. So talk more about the role of content, if you would, in terms of what you're seeing in the, your, with your customers. So they're making an offer somewhere, it could be a social offer, it could be an email offer, whatever, and they're bringing them to something, typically or often would be content, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all about personalization, right? Consumers are looking for experiences that are relevant to them. So when we talk about content from a marketing perspective, it's really about sending a message to those consumers that is related to a previous behavior, an indicated interest, um, you know, something that they've searched for before. It could be an upsell for a similar product. So the content really needs to be tailored to the consumer and what they're looking for. And fortunately, they're leaving a lot of cookie trails, a lot of footprints in terms of what that content should be. And so smart marketers need to pick up on that, right? And then develop the content accordingly. In order to do that, you need the right technology. And, and okay, so it's, but somebody still has to develop the content. Is that the agency? Is that the consultancy? Is that the brand? Is yeah. it a third party? The, the content, you know, we're seeing um, primarily, it, you know, it's the ad agencies, you know, who are developing the content. Consultancies are also advising on the content. You know, content is, um, the content development um, is not, um, it, there's no single entity, I think, that's in charge of that anymore, right? It's really who's controlling the data, who can advise on the message. And it allows creative teams within ad agencies, it allows creative teams within consultancies, and within the marketer's own organization to be smarter. So 
I think you're gonna see all three parties coming to the table. And the technology helps me manage that content? Is that a part of it or is that not necessarily the The technology case? helps you to deliver those personalized content experiences. Mm -hmm. So that when you land on a website, you know, it's saying, hello, <laughs> you know, and it maybe it's got, you know, um, a list of items and products that you've, you know, searched for before. You know, when you go on to social media, there is, you know, a, a banner, there's an ad that speaks to something that you've searched for previously. When you receive an email, it speaks to an interest that you've indicated that you have. So the messaging is very relevant to where you are at that point in time. It reminds me of, of a quote we've had on other Cube uh, shows where, you know, if, if it's done well, it's magical, right? If it's done poorly, it's creepy. And, and yeah. it, it's a fine line to make sure you're delivering the right thing to it the right person. So line. it's not creepy, but it's relevant and, and it's contextual and it, it is what I want to see right now. And I think that's where the fidelity of the data comes in, right? I mean, at Oracle, we have something called the Oracle Data Graph, um, which really helps us to get to a, a true view of the consumer and who they are. So that when our, um, when our clients are using our technology, we can ensure that they're receiving the right message, the right time. And it's not creepy, it's actually relevant, useful, and helpful. Right. And it's one of the many advantages that we bring to the table for marketers, you know, that type of ID fidelity, and not just on your desktop, but on your mobile device and across all of the screens that you're, you're accessing on a daily basis. Oh, I was just said the other thing on, on the content side, which I think is interesting, you look like uh, brands like Red Bull and, and GoPro, which uh, have taken kind of this, yes, there used mm -hmm. to be kind of a lifestyle thing that would be expressed in a magazine ad or a commercial, but now they're doing much broader kind of experiences Absolutely, associated yeah. with the brand. I mean, I think nothing better than, than when the guy jumped out of the space, the space uh, craft for the world's longest um, drop. It was, I think it was GoPro and, and Red Bull on yeah. that one to, to build this sense of community around the content and oh, by the way, our, our products are, are kind of part of this thing too. Yeah, and I think there's a huge opportunity for clients that are really investing in you know, branded experiences um, and content development to get smarter in how they use data and the technology that's fueling that so that they can reach broader audiences. So they're not just preaching to the choir, but they're also reaching you know, those consumers who are currently not in their database, who are currently not Red Bull drinkers, right, but would be interested in, in the content and could potentially become evangelists as well. So um, you mentioned you know, cookie crumbs or breadcrumbs, uh, and we always talk about this notion of nonlinear consumption, which is sort of um, in terms of the way in which consumers find things. Uh, but then at the same time, you see things like binge watching, which doesn't really get more linear. What are you seeing in terms of just consumption patterns? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, binge watching is, is still a huge trend. You know, um, I think you know earlier this year, Netflix uh, experimented with releasing a show, you know, one episode at the time. Consumers hated that, right? It's like, no, I want to watch it in one weekend. Um, so I think um, we're seeing that that is, you know, still very much a trend. Um, but I think, you know, the, the, the trend that we're going to see that's continuing to grow is, is mobile. You know, um, here at Adweek, there was a great panel discussion with Sheryl Sandberg and some of the Facebook partners and just, you know, the, stick, the, the stickiness of, of mobile content and, and how to be more effective in, in distributing content through mobile devices. I think consumers more and more are going to be accessing content um, through those, those handheld devices. And that's why it's going to be essential for marketers to have the right technology to be able to identify what content they're watching on those mobile devices and then market to them accordingly. So what do I, as a cons customer of the Oracle Marketing Cloud, what do I actually buy? I'm buying a subscription to the Marketing Cloud? Is it a, or yeah, is it an annual agreement? Or you're buying individual solutions. Um, so um, typically with working with our agency partners, um, the, uh, our data management platform, our DNP, is the um, gateway, if you will, into the Oracle Marketing Cloud because our agency partners are working with their clients uh, and really looking for opportunities to consolidate their data, to segment out their audiences and get smarter at how they market. In addition to that, we have other solutions um, such as Eloqua, Responses, and Maximizer, um, all of which are helping to enable the automation and the personalization of marketing. So those subscriptions you know, each help drive um, that really relevant customer experience that we've been talking about, either through email, through really smart site design, Design, um, or through just you know really being intelligent about how you're segmenting your audiences. We talked to Eric Reynolds from Clorox at, at an event earlier or last year, and it was fascinating to me because you think of CPG as pretty 
data driven, mm -hmm. smart, you know, using all the tools at their disposal. And even he was like, but this is a complete, you know, kind of transformation and a refresh of doing so many things a different way, which yeah. was fascinating to me that you think of them as being so data driven in the first place that there's still this huge gap that they feel they need to, to, yeah. to get past. It's, it's, it, it is huge, right? It's a whole new world. And I think a lot of marketers are looking for the right partners to really help them navigate this new connected ecosystem. And I think that's really where the opportunity is, right? For ad agencies and for consultancies to come in and help drive those relationships and educate clients. And my job is to help educate the ad agencies um, so that they can get smarter at navigating the ecosystem. Because it's one, um, you know, really it's about starting with the consumer, being consumer first, right? Uh, once you can get that principle down, once you're convinced of that, then it's figuring out how do we do this, right? Where is the consumer, first of all, right? Mapping out, you know, that consumer journey and then, you know, finding the right technologies and, and the data to track that consumer and then the right technology to deliver the appropriate messages at the right time. And then, right, ultimately, the end piece is the right attribution model so you understand where your investments are really working and how you can optimize. And, and the, the ROI measurement is the tr same traditional conversion and pipeline? Yeah, or? you know, it's really disappointing. I, I still see clients who are really invested in last click attribution, right? So that's when that last click, the last action the consumer took gets all the credits, right, for the sale or for the conversion. Um, and that's why you see, you know, search marketing um, being such a huge investment area, because oftentimes, you know, a consumer, a, a consumer will, you know, put in a search term and convert from there um, without any regard for all of the brand and product exposure that happened before that's that great. search term was even made, <laughs> right? Um, and, so, and so marketers, that's how it works, right? That's how we all are, respond to media. That's how we we all respond to marketing, um, but yet marketers, right, are, are still figuring out um, how to measure that. Last click attribution is easy, it's simple, right? When you start talking about multi-click attribution and marketing mix modeling, it gets really, the, the conversation becomes a lot more nuanced when you're a marketer and you have to explain to your organization how well this $50 million investment did, right? It's easy to say, well, we drove, you know, 50 million clicks and, you know, we drove, you know, 30, 30 million uh, hits to our site um, and ultimately that resulted in X amount of sales. That's an easy conversation. It's very linear. The consumer, as we were saying, yeah. consumer journey isn't linear and neither should your attribution model. Well, it's true, right? If you see an ad for Nike versus, you know, Acme shoes, what are you going to click on first? But, but right? that thing that gets you to search for the Google, I mean, that is, that is a terrific insight. Yeah. I mean, yeah. smart Google, they're getting the benefit of all that pre-work yeah. that leads <laughs> to the point that I sit down and search yeah. for the term I mean, Nike. Mopping up all the hard work. <laughs> yeah, it, it's seeing the, those TV ads. It's seeing, yeah. you know, right. the social the media ads, right. right? It's seeing the billboard when you're driving in. It's right. opening the magazine. You know, it's up. Oh, seeing a banner, you know, mm. um, looking on your phone and, you know, seeing an ad um, in an app. It's all of those exposures, uh, you know, and it takes, it could take a few different exposures. Frequency, right, right. Uh, I think, is still key before that consumer decides, let me figure out what this is. You know, I might want to get this. Right. Um, and so it's important for marketers to understand what's driving the, the influence so they can distribute their budgets accordingly. Awesome, great topic, we gotta go. Thanks very much, Wendy, for okay, coming on Okay, thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. It's theCUBE, we're live from New York City. We'll be right back.